We're starting chapter two, which is all about um, visualizing data. Okay, visualizing data. So essentially plotting things, um, plotting functions, so you can look at results of certain things that you've, uh, you've calculated. Okay, and using MATLAB to do these, these plotting things. Um, so today I'll just talk a little bit about what plotting is how, and, you know, and why it's important. Um, we'll go through a demo, a bit like last week. I'll be using MATLAB and going through the various commands to do some basic plotting. Um, how do you customise it? How do you specify what it's going to look like? Um, how do you go for multiple plots? I'll then do a, a look, looking at um, how you fit, um, fit a line um, or a curve to a set of data. So you can sort of make some generalisations. How you save figures. And then I've also got some 3D plots um, as a sort of demonstration to show you MATLAB's capabilities. Um, but you don't need to worry about how to do 3D plots at the moment. It, it is relatively simple, but, um, but at the moment we'll not need, you, know, you don't need to worry about that too much. So plotting in MATLAB, obviously the reason why we plot data is you know, the, the famous saying, a picture says a thousand words, well often when you're dealing with engineering it is quite useful to have a bit of data, you know, if you've got some data that's relatively complicated, if you can plot it you can show certain things and it makes it a lot easier to, to sort of see and understand. Um, MATLAB is obviously very capable of this. It can do a wide variety of different two-dimensional plots, so where you've got two sets of data plotting one against the other to get lines and bar graphs and that sort of stuff. Um, but it also can expand into three-dimensional plots as well. And like I said, I'll show you some example pictures of 3D plots, and we'll perhaps even, if we've got time, I'll even do, do one very quickly. Okay. Obviously, in MATLAB, you've got the figure. If you wanted to stick it in a report, you need to export it into a certain format so you can paste it into Microsoft Word or whatever. Um, you can just do copy-paste, but there's also a bunch of different formats you can export um, figures to, like PDF and EPS and JPEG and all that sort of stuff, TIFF. And like I said, at the moment, we're going to focus very much on two-dimensional stuff. Okay. Um, with, a, I, the, there's a, um, with the manuals for MATLAB, if you're actually you know, old enough to get the hard copy manuals, um, they did a, ma a manual for the, uh, the actual MATLAB software, and then there was a separate manual that was almost as big just on how to do figures. Okay? And so, it's, like I said, it's very capable, um, uh, and uh, it can get quite complicated. And you'll see an example of a complicated one a bit later on, but like I said, it, at the moment we're going to focus on 2D, 2D stuff, and it's relatively straightforward. So if I come out of this, go to MATLAB. Okay, you should all be familiar with this now. And you should all be familiar with simple commands on how, and, you know, how to control the command window and do perform basic calculations. Now, to do a plot in MATLAB, okay, um, there's one command that you'll be using quite a lot, and it's just called plot. And it takes two, or it can take one or two um, input arguments. And so say I've got a bunch of data that's stored in X and a bunch of data stored in Y, I can plot them against each other by typing plot X, Y. So let's create some data in X and Y. So let's, let's, let's plot a simple line following Y equals MX plus B. Now to do that, I need to define, first off, my X variable. This is my independent variable. And this will, let's say this is a horizontal axis. And I want to plot a line um, that's between minus 5 and plus 5 on the X axis. So I need to define my X variable. So I'm going to go between minus 5 and plus 5 and point steps of point 0.1. You should all be familiar with this notation now. Okay, so uh, my first variable, x over there, okay, you can see that in the variable um, window. Now, y equals, like I said, we're going to plot a line. So mx plus b or mx plus c, depending on what you were taught. Let's say m is 2, so I do 2 times x plus, and let's say the y-intercept is 5. So I'll do that. Okay, so there's my two variables, x and y. Now, <coughs> if I wanted to plot them against each other, I, like I said, you type plot x, y, and I press return. And it thinks about it, and there's my plot of y equals mx plus b. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dock this in the workspace so you can see what I'm doing. Here's, here's the command window, and there's the plot. Okay, and that's, there's a very basic plot of a line in MATLAB, okay? Looks quite bare, 
Perhaps if I turn the grid on, which I do by typing grid on, I get some grid lines and we can see what's going on. Notice where the origin is, okay? The origin is where it's 0, 0, okay? Normally, you know, sometimes you might expect the origin to be in this corner. It's not because we've got um, some negative values, okay? And, it, and the way MATLAB draws its, uh, uh, the axes is always on the edge, okay? Sometimes you may see um, you know, axes drawn in the middle or something. Well, MATLAB will do that, but the, the labels are always going to be on the edge. It's just one of the way MATLAB works. Okay, so that's the grid. Then there's a basic straight line graph. Now the other way to um, the other way to plot is if you if you take the two variables, okay, x and y, I select them in that order. You notice up here it says plot x y. Well, if I clicked on that, it would do the same thing. It would give me a plot, okay. And if you click on the little arrow and go down here and press catalog, you can see all the different types of. If it comes up, catalog. You can see all the different types of graphs that MATLAB can do um, with two bits of dimensional data. Okay, so plot x, y, plot as multiple uh, series on the same plot, um, bar x, y. So plots as multiple series. What it does is it takes x and it takes y and plots them against each other. Okay, no, notice that's not what we're looking for generally. So if I go back and I just do this one, or I can type plot x, whoops, the x, y. And I'll turn the grid on. There we go. So that's what that's where we were. Okay. Now, so you saw what, what we did. If I go back up to the top, you first off got to define what your independent variable is. In this case, x. And the independent variable is always the horizontal axis. Your dependent variable, which is the vertical axis, always you know, is called dependent because it depends on what value you've got for x. Because I've got x in here. Okay. So that this line, I define what x is. This line will define what y is. Notice I've used dot times x, OK? Remember, we want to do element by element multiplication. You have to use the dot times sign. Remember, that was from last week. mx plus b, or mx plus c, plot x versus y, OK? Or y versus x. And then I've turned the grid on. So that's essentially the basic structure of plotting in MATLAB, OK? The grid I find quite useful. What about if I want to do? A different value for y, okay? So if I start typing, I'll call this y2. Let's go for a parabola, okay? So an x squared function, x dot count 2, okay? So that's x squared, and let's go for minus 5. So that's created another variable. If you look up here in the variable box, I'll use the thing, okay? y2, I've got another variable. If I type in plot x, y2, oops, in the window, plot x, y2, I get my parabola, OK? I'll turn the grid on again. And we get, our, again, here's the origin. And I've got my parabola, OK, which is a graph of x squared minus 5. Notice, again, I've got the, the, the dot caret, because you need to do element by element multiplication. x, if I just did that, I get an error, OK? So you've got to make sure you've got, the, you've got that dot um, command in there. OK, there it is in the command history. So that's basic plotting, 2D plotting in MATLAB. That's, that's all it is. You've just got to remember this plot command. OK. But if you were making a report and you stuck this graph in, I'd mark you down quite a lot because I don't know what that graph is of. OK, what's... What's the, what are the axes called? What are, you know, what's the, what, are, what, are, what are you trying to describe? Okay. Well, there's ways to do that in MATLAB, customising your plot. The first thing is labels. So let's say I wanted to add a label to the x-axis, okay, and I'll call it x. Well, to do that in MATLAB, you type x, label, all one word, open brackets, and then in the brackets you put quote marks in, and you put whatever you want to call the x-axis. So I'm going to call it x. OK, I now have an x down here. And the y-axis, well, I could call it y, but I'm not. I'm going to call it what y is equal to. So I'm going to, again, put it in quotes, x to the power of 2 minus 5. And now I've got a y label that's x squared minus 5. Okay? So that's, 
describing what my x and y axis are. And if I wanted to give it a title, well, obviously, I type title, some quote marks in brackets, and I give it a title. And I'm going to call it a parabola, since that's what it is. And so now I've got the title. X label gives me the x-axis label. Y label gives me the y-axis label. And then title gives me the title. OK? Relatively straightforward. What about if I didn't like, didn't want a blue line, I wanted a black line or a red line? Well, you do that by changing the plot command, okay? If I, if I stick another comma in there and then some quotes, let's say I wanted a black line. Black is denoted by K. I press go, I get a black line. Okay? If I wanted red, more obviously, I type R and I get red. And you can do the same. You can imagine green might be G, blue might be blue, B for blue, okay, and so on. And I've given you a whole bunch of different colours. On page 31 of your notes, um, you can see a little table, table 2.1, gives you some, some of the more common colours, okay. <coughs> what about if I wanted a dash line? Well, I can add a dash, sort of how I want the thing to be dashed. There's four different types. There's a solid line, which is which, which is the default, okay? If I wanted a dash line, I put two hyphens and I get a dash line, okay? If I wanted a dotted line, I replace the two hyphens with a colon, I get a dotted line. And if I wanted a dash dot line, well, so it's dash dot, dash dot, I can do that and you get, get that sort of line, okay? So that's how to, that's how to change the line specification. Now, the other thing that you might want to do is you want to plot data points. Instead of a line, you just want data points. Well, again, in table 2.2 has a bunch of different types of data points you can plot. So if I didn't want a line, I just wanted plus signs where there's each point of data, I could do that. And so every point of data now has a plus sign denoted to it. OK? And there's a whole bunch of different ones there. You could uh, go for asterisks, OK, or uh, diamonds even. Squares, there's all sorts of different things you can do. And each of these can be customised as well. You could change the colour of the outline of the, of the square and the inside of the square. They could be a different colour. This is just the default options. And if you wanted to look more, if you type doc line spec, OK, line spec is where is the location of the details in the help system. And you can see there's a whole bunch of documentation about the different line specifications. You can see there's some of the tables with the different types of line styles, marker types, okay? So there's more than I've even done. You could have a hexagram or a pentagram, different colours, related properties, and you can go in and you can you know, to delve into more details with those sorts of things. <coughs> so that's how to change the line specification. What about, say, OK, this is the default axis. has given me some nice limits on the axis, but I want to change it. Let's go, let's go back to a nice... Um, uh, that, let's just delete that. OK, let's go back to this nice one. And I'll put the grid on because it helps to see what's going on. Let's say I wanted to change the axis labels, or the axis sort of extents. In Microsoft Excel, you'd, you'd be looking for scale. Well, it's the same, similar sort of thing here. You type in axis, OK, and there's various things you can type after axis, OK? If I wanted to set them so that the spacing between each of the things was equal to each other, I type equal, OK, and I get, you can see the spacing between 0 and minus 5 is the same as the spacing between 0 and minus 5. So you get a square set of axes, OK? It's obviously squished everything up because it's made everything square. That's one thing you can do. You can type in axis square, and notice that what it, what it will do is, is this, this is a rectangle at the moment. If I make axis square, it actually makes the axis, the, you know, the actual window, square. So if you like square pictures in your report, then you can do that, and you get a square picture. OK? The other thing you can do is you can customise it. You can put whatever limits you want. If you type in axis, and this time I'm going to put some 
some uh, parentheses in, followed by a set of square brackets. And then I can enter various limits, OK? And the order is the x minimum, x maximum. So I'm going to go from 0 to 5 in the x-axis. And then with the y minimum and the y maximum. So I'm going to go from minus 5 to, say, 10. And that's going to zoom in on the area between 0 and 5 and, and minus 5 and 10. It's going to zoom in on this area. And if I press go, that's what I get. OK, so from 0 to 5, which is the x minimum, x maximum, from minus 5 to plus 10. 10. OK, so that's how you change the limits on that thing. There's some other commands I've given you in the, in the, um, in the notes. If I wanted to change just the x, I, do the, I can do the same thing. So if I go from minus 5 to 5, that's changed the, just the x-axis to give me from minus 5 to plus 5, from, zero, from minus 5 to 10 in the y-axis. OK, and you can do the same y-lim. will also change the y-axis only. Now, there's various other things you can customise. If you click this button up here, this is known as Plot Tools, OK, which opens up the Plot Tools. Normally it takes, let's undock this window as well. Undock Figure 1, OK. Plot Tools. So now I've got a whole bunch of different things um, in here that I can customise. If I click, I can click on various things and I can choose the different colour. Let's say I want to make it red. Let's say I wanted to make it a fat line, you know, and various other marker. Let's go for one of them. You can change all sorts of things. There's the fill colour. So let's say I want to, let's go for a, let's go for a circle. Um, I don't know, with a, this sort of thing going on. There's all sorts of things you can change around. Um, you can change it again. If you click on here, you can change the um, axis label, X label, X, you know, whatever, all, all sorts of things. And there's loads of different properties you can see that you can change. These are all the different properties that associate to that figure. And so you can change them however you want. Like I said, it's extremely powerful. That's if you want a, a graphical user interface. Often you just don't need it, OK? We don't need to worry about that. Um, I'm not bigger one, OK? So let's close that down. Right, so that's how you do basic plotting. And that's how you customize figures, OK? Are there any questions so far? No? It's all straightforward. OK, well, what about if we wanted to plot more than one plot at the same time on the same set of axes? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. We've still got our x defined, y, which is our straight line, and y2, which is our parabola. Well, let's say we wanted to plot them on the same set of axes. Well, there's one easy way to do that. If it's just two sets of data, you type x, y, and then you type x, x, y, 2. And that's going to think, OK, well, there's two sets of data. I'm using x as the same x-axis, and I've got two different sets of y data. If I press return, I get both lines on the same graph. OK? That's nice and straightforward. You can, and what MATLAB has done is it's automatically, give, it's automatically seen that there's two sets of data on the same axis, so it's given it different colours, OK? And obviously, if you wanted to give it your own set of colours, you can do that. Let's make the second set red. OK. Uh, let's, let's dock this so we can see what's going on. OK, so it's now made the parabola red, because that's what I've asked it to do. If I stuck a specifier in here, it obviously it would change the, the, what the straight line looks like. That's one way to plot data on the same axis, is just to ask for it to plot the same thing. The other way, which is perhaps a bit more powerful because it's a bit more flexible, is to do one set of data, x, y. OK, there's my x, y. I'm going to turn the grid on because I like the grid. I can see what's going on a bit easier. Now, if I wanted to add something else to that, OK, I can type hold on. And now no, more, now, no matter what I stick on this graph, that will still remain, OK? So I could then decide, let's say I wanted to plot my parabola on there, x, y, 2, OK? And I'm going to give it a different specifier, because if I just did it without it, it would plot it in blue. So there is in red. And let's say I define a new variable, x, 3. That's going to go for x, 
Let's go for x cubed, OK? And so I could then now type plot x, y3, and I get x cubed. Now I'm going to make that a black line. OK? And I'm going to change the axis so I can see around the origin. So let's go for minus 1. No, that's yeah, minus 1. No, it's minus 5 to 5. And then from, say, minus 2 to 2. OK, so you can see what's going on. <coughs> there's my straight line. There's my parabola. And there's my x cubed line. OK, so you can see what's going on. If you want to zoom in. I'm going to go back. Uh, axis type. There we go. So I've gone back to the extents of the data. So if you hold, like I said, you get you can do multiple things. And there's a I've got a little demo on page 33, which I can just do quickly. I'm going to define t between zero and pi in steps of pi over 20. Okay. Yeah, no, two pi, two pi, zero and two pi. Okay, so. I've defined a new variable t up there, OK? And I'm going to define three y-dependent axes. Sine t, y2 equals sine t minus pi over 2. And y3, so if I change that to y3, t minus pi. OK, so now I've got... So new variables, y1, y2, and y3, OK? Notice I've redefined y2 and y3, because they were defined earlier up there. Remember, y3 is there. I've redefined them now to match what I want, OK? And that's how I wanted to plot them all against each other. Or I could do plot x, y1. OK, and I'm going to define it as a, um, as a dash dot line, dash dot, in red. And I want it to be denoted by... Whoops, denoted by some stars as well. Oh. OK, let's, let's try it. Ah, it's, obviously, it's T, isn't it? There we are. OK, so there we go. I've got my dash dot line of Y1, which we know is sine of T. And that's obviously a sine curve between 0 and 2 pi. OK, 2 pi being 6.28 etc. OK, which is of where that is. Now, if I wanted to plot the other ones, I could do hold on, plot y2, and we're going to, let's go for a dash line in magenta with circles showing the data points. There we are. And if I do another plot oops, with y3, and this time it's going to be a dotted line in blue with some squares showing the data points. OK, so there we go. <coughs> and so because I've typed hold on, these two graphs just get plotted on top of what was already there. If I want to turn hold off, well, quite obviously, I do hold off. And if I wanted to plot that again, it just plots that. OK, hold off, turns it, turns the hold off. And whatever you plot will replace what was in there with just that one there. OK, so that's the other way to do it. Now, let's go back to the, uh, what we had before. So if I plot all three, hold on, oops, on, y2 and y3, OK? Let's turn the grid on for fun. Now, if I wanted to identify what these are, obviously I can give this a label, which I'll do, OK, x label. Oh. What's going on there? Apologies. Ah, I know what I've done. <laughs> I wonder if this will fix it. Yeah, OK, there we go. X label T, so I've done that, OK? Now, it doesn't make sense to label the y axis with the three different things, you know, with the equations of those, but it does make sense to give it a legend, OK? Now, to give a legend, you type in legend. OK, and if I just typed in legend, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't think it would do anything. Right. There's three bits of data, so I'm going to give it three slots for me to stick stuff in. And I'm going to label the things. So sine t, sine 
t minus pi divided by 2, and then sine t minus, minus pi. So if I do that, I've now got a legend up in the corner with my labels. And so I can see that my dashed dot line with stars is sine of t. My circles with a dashed line is sine of t minus pi divided by 2. And my dotted line with squares is sine of t minus pi. OK, and so that's obviously given me some information. If you wanted to move the legend, you can do so. There's various commands that enable you to do that. To get those commands, you can type help legend. Oops. And it gives you a whole bunch of information about um, where to put the legend and all that sort of stuff. OK. Now, there's a little trick. I don't know whether any of you know of LaTeX, but say I wanted the actual pi symbol. OK, I can type in a forward slash, this one, over there. It's a little trick if you wanted to know. And it'll actually change them into pies, the Greek letter pi instead of writing pi. But us beside the side, doesn't really matter. OK, so that's how to get a legend. And that's one way of plotting multiple sets of data on the same set of axes. Now, the other way to plot multiple bits of data is to use lots of different axes in the same sort of window. Okay? And that uses a different um, set of command called subplot. And let's do a little demo of that. I'm going to clear everything for the time being. Okay? So that's got rid of everything. It's got rid of all my data. It's got rid of the figure. Okay? And I'm going to clear the command window as well so we can start afresh. Now, I'm going to define x in the same way, minus 5, 0 0.015. and okay, 5. So I've gone from even, I've now got 1,000 x data points. And I'm going to define a few different y's. Okay, So we're going to go for x. Um, so that's a nice straight line. y2 equals x squared. y3 equals x cubed. OK, and y4. Four equals x four. Okay, so now I've got my four y variables up there. Indeed, that should be y. Apologies. Here we are. I'll get rid of this one. Delete. Okay. So there's my there's my four variables and x. Okay. <coughs> and now, if I wanted to plot them, obviously I could do the I could do the whole plot y1, y2, y3, y4 on the same axis. But let's say I want them on separate axes, but all within the same window. Well, you can type subplot, OK? And then in here, you have to give it, you know, you have to tell it what to do. You put the number of plots you want in the rows, OK? The number of rows of plots, the number of columns of plots, and then the position. And so I'm going to go for a 2 by 2. So there's going to be four plots in this window, OK? And the first plot, I want to be... So you do that, type a colon, plot, x, y, uh, 1. OK, so there in the first, it's, like I said, it's divided that plot window up into four things, because I've got 2 by 2, which is 4. The first window, which is always the upper left-hand side, OK, is going to be plot x, y, 1, uh, yeah, x and y, 1. Now, let's say I wanted to do for the second window, which is going to be the top row in the second position. I do that. OK, remember, if you press the up arrow, you get the previous command, which is what I'm doing to do this quickly. Y3, and then subplot for the fourth window. Let's go for y to the power of 4. OK, so you can now plot lots of bits of diff different data, and you can sort of compare them. And obviously, you can give labels and various things like that. If I went back to the first one, x label. X, Y label, yeah, uh, yeah, X, oh, yeah. So it's given the first plot, okay, the axes labels X and X, okay. And obviously I could do the same thing for the second plot. If I copied that, <coughs> copy, paste, X. Yeah. Okay, you can do that. 
Notice that what I've been doing here is I've been separating commands on the same line with a semicolon. And that allows you to put multiple commands on the same line in one go. And when you press go, it just goes through them all in one go. OK, you don't need to keep pressing return um, to do that. OK. So that enables you to do subplots. OK. <coughs> now, bear in mind, let's say I wanted to do y uh, 5 equals, I don't know, x, sine of x. OK, and think, oh, I want to, let's plot that big. If I type plot x, y5, it'll go back to the plot that I was previously editing and replace it, OK? To get a new window, you can either clear it by typing clf or clear all, or to get a new figure window, say you wanted to keep this, you type figure, and then you can now do your plot command. And that will, that will change that figure, OK? So, that's what's going on there. That's basic plotting, OK? So we now learn how to do basic plotting. We've learned how to change the way your plot looks with labels and change the way the line looks, OK, with line specification. And we've looked at how to plot multiple sets of data, either on the same set of axes or on different sets of axes within the same window. These are all useful things to do. And the exercises that you get to do will allow you to... Uh, to have a look at that. Now, the, la the next section is curve fitting. OK, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clear my data, clear the figure, and clear the command window. OK, so we're back to square one. It's quite useful to dock this figure window when you're plotting data, because you can enter commands and look at the results straight away. OK, um, so if you want to do that, you can do that. In the thing. Now, fitting data is often very useful. Okay, if you if you say you've done an experiment, you've measured some results, often measured results can be quite noisy, okay? And um, and you want to sort of look at the trend of what it's doing, okay? Well, one way to do that is to is to fit a bunch of uh, you know, fit a, a line or a parabola or whatever you think it should be to that data, and you can then see what's going on. And uh, MATLAB has some basic commands to allow you to do that, and we're going to go through those in a second. Um, and but, but it's, like I said, it's quite powerful. There's a bunch of uh, different tools you can look at as well. If you went to um, in the figure window, tools, and I believe there's a uh, where is it? Is it tools? Basic fitting. I think there's a basic fitting. Perhaps it's not under here. I can't remember. Basic fitting. Yeah. So when I've got some data on there. You can select basic fitting, and then there's like a graphical user interface to do some fitting. But let's not worry about that for the time being. Let's look at some basic commands. So you'll see over here in my directory, I've got some data that I've uh, made previously, OK, which I'm going to load by either double-clicking. And double-clicking does load linear fit dot map, OK? So there's my load command, and I've loaded that data. And we can plot that data, plot x. Whoops plot x, y, and you can see what I've, the state is. Quite noisy. Let's plot it as some data points. So I'm going to enter my command in here. What am I going to do? Let's go for red circles. Red circles. Oops. Red circles. OK, so there's my data. And so you can see it's sort of, you know, it's about a linear sort of fashion, OK? And so I'm going to try a straight line fit. Now, like I said, if you went to the figure window, tools, basic fitting, whoops, not data statistics, basic fitting, there's various different types of, of data fits you can do, OK? Fourth degree polynomial. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Yeah, so, well, there we go. You can see it on the, on the graph. Whoops. You can see that I've got a fourth degree polynomial in there. If I turn that off, Let's go for a six degree polynomial. Badly conditioned. Hmm, interesting. So you can see, yeah, you can see, you can do some basic <coughs> things like that. But let's not worry about that for the time being. Let's press close. OK, I'm going to just go back to that. Let's turn legend off. OK. So there we go. So that's my basic data. Now, that, now to do a line fit with 
um, with the commands, you have to use two um, functions. Okay, one is called polyfit, which will create a bunch of coefficients by which um, the line fits. Okay, and then you use polyval to create the new set of data to to be able to draw that line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in coefficients, okay, which is going to be the coefficients of the line um, that it's going to draw, okay. And it's called poly, oops, poly fit. Why well, give it my original data, and let's say what, so like I said, a straight line fit, so it's a first degree polynomial. I type in one. And what that does, that creates a new variable up here with some numbers in, okay, called coefficients. <coughs> now, if I want to make the y, you know, the, the set of data that fits that, okay, I type in y fit, creating a new variable called y fit, and I type in polyval, oops, polyval, which takes those coefficients values, so I type in coefficients, and I want to plot it against x. So curve, this first command creates some values in co called coefficients which are based on the original data you've given it. And it's a first order polynomial fit, okay? Poly fit. Okay, and then this one creates a new variable called y fit. You can call it whatever you want, straight line approximation, whatever, okay? I'll call it y fit, which takes those, those values, coefficients, okay, and then plots it against my original x-axis, x, okay? If this was called horizontal, I'd stick horizontal in here, okay? So it creates a new value, a new vector of y fit based on those values. And so if I type go, okay, I've now got a second set of data, y fit, which is the same size as x and the same size as y, which I can then plot against x to get the straight line. And so I'm going to do that. If I had to hold on, remember, I've got to save what was currently there, plot x, y fit, I get my straight line approximation, okay? Straight line approximation, and I could give it a legend. Remember, two sets of data. I'm going to go for raw data, and then here I'm going to type straight line. Fox. Okay, so there we go. I've got my legend up there in the corner. And so you can compare the raw data with the straight line approximation. And obviously, good practice means that you should give your labels x, y label y. Okay. And so, yeah, so there we go. So you can look at the straight line approximation. <coughs> So yeah, so there we go. So that's basically basic fitting. Now, the last thing, if you wanted to see what the line, the equation of the line looks like, let's just look at what coefficients equals. 5.0316 and 195.4123. Well, think about the equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus c. This value is m, and this value is c. Okay, so the y-intercept is 195, which looks about right to me, okay, and the slope is about 5, okay, so for every 10 I'm going up here, it's going up about 50, okay, and so on, so you can see what's going on, and that gives you, and obviously if I did, if we went back and uh, typed in coefficients for second order polynomial, I'm going to type y fit, and then plot, it's giving me a second order coefficient, um, and there's my third order, so, sorry, second order. So it'd be 0.0036x squared plus 4.6706x plus 201.3684. You can see it's not much better than my straight line fit, denoted by the fact that this number is tiny, okay? If you think about it, if you've got very little of x squared action going on, then obviously that's, you know, the straight line is probably better. Now, let's say I wanted to uh, save this figure. Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can go File, Save, OK. And MATLAB's 
default option is called dot fig, and that means you can reopen the figure in MATLAB, um, and you can do manipulation to it. So if I if I call this uh, I don't know test fig or whatever, so I've now got a file in here called test fig, and I can open that up. So it opens up a new figure. There it is. Notice that this this figure now has nothing to do with those variables. Okay, if I clear the workspace. Okay, and I'll also clear the figure, why not? Open it up. There's my figure. Notice I've got no variables attached to that. So the only thing I've got is a figure in there, okay? Um, that's all the data that's contained. I can make changes to it. If I type in grid on, I can add a grid to it. I can change the axis. I can change the axis and all that sort of stuff. But I can't actually access those data points. Okay, so bear that in mind. Obviously, if I wanted to save it in different ways, I can do save as. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of different options. Bitmap, EPS, enhanced meta file, JPEG, blah, 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 blah. Okay. PDF, TIFF, etc. Okay, so you can add, you can check, export it in all these different formats um, and you know, in different ways. So that's obviously the way to save a figure. You can also click the save button. And say I wanted to copy it, I could just press control C to copy. I go to, uh, I don't know, where's, where's Word? Microsoft Office. Word. So I'm making a new Word document. And you can just obviously, if I copied a figure perhaps, copy. Uh, it didn't work. I thought you could copy it. Edit. Copy. I might be wrong. Perhaps it, I used to do this, I'm sure. No, it doesn't work. OK, not to worry. You can't do that. You have to export it as a figure, then import it into Microsoft Word. OK. Right, so that's the last bit of thing. Let's, let's do a bit more fun. Let's look at some 3D plots. There's a 3D plot. OK, in fact, I'm going to plot this in MATLAB right now. So if I go back to MATLAB, let's clear the figure, clear the data, and clear this commands window. This is quite simple to do, minus 10, uh, 10, y equals x, OK, and z equals x times y. OK, and this command is called surf, to make the surface of z. No, it's not. What's, what's it? z must be a matrix. What have I done wrong? Ah. This is a bit of a cheat because, like I said, it uses matrix multiplication, which you don't know about yet, but let's just go for that. So Z is now a, a table, OK, you can see there. Um, and if I type surf Z, whoops. There we go, there's my plot, OK? And obviously I can give the labels and stuff, but the really interesting thing to do is if you click this button, you can you know, view it around different... Look at the different views, okay? So it's a three, proper three-dimensional figure, okay? So you can see what's going on there. So there it is, in all its glory. There's, that's a surface plot. Color bar gives you some values you can associate with the different colors there. So the red color is up to 100, and the blue color is down to minus 100. So here we've got minus 100. Up the top we've got red. And you can see the point in the middle here, that's in, the, that's in the, forward, the forward corner, and that's also 100 as well. So you get that sort of two, 3D parabola shape, because there's a, two parabolas there. Well, in fact, there's more than two. A 3D helix, again, there's a bunch of commands you can see in the notes that shows you how to plot such a thing. OK, and they can get very, very complicated. OK, there's, a, there's a quite a complicated one. Again, created with a surface. There's the equation for it up top. The function of both x and y. C is some constant, OK, sine of 2 pi a, which is another constant times the square root. Yeah, you, again, you get the idea. <coughs> and like I said, MATLAB's quite powerful. You can do quite a lot of commands. This is going to create a figure. You'll see in a second. OK, membrane is a certain function. And there's all a bunch of different things. This is all to do with rendering, OK, because it's going to render it. You can see various information about lights, their position in the axis and colour, etc., 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 how to render it. 
And when you do the things, you get this, which you should find familiar. OK? That's the logo for MathWorks. And so that's all the commands. Like I said, so there's quite a lot of complicated things you can do um, with plotting in MATLAB. So that's it for this lecture. You're a bit early, which is good. Uh, there's a bunch of exercises for you to do on page 43. OK? The solutions for last week's exercises are on Blackboard, as well as the additional questions that you were given. The solutions for those are also on Blackboard. OK. See you next week for those I see in the tutorial. And for those I don't, I'll see you in three weeks' time. Thank you very much.